In this video, we're going to show you how to create music using samples inside your computer using Ableton Live 9 or 10. There are an infinite number of ways for you to be creative with samples, and this video will demonstrate just some of the techniques at your disposal. So feel free to experiment during this tutorial and beyond. Below this video, we've provided you with a link which you can use to download the samples or sounds that we'll be using in this video so that you can work along with this tutorial step by step. Please click on the link below to begin the download. On Windows, open your file explorer and go to your downloads folder. Once the download is complete, right click on the zipped folder and select extract all. Ensure that show extracted files when complete is checked and hit extract. On a Mac, open your Finder and go to the Downloads folder. Once the download is complete, please double click on the zipped folder to unzip it. We recommend moving this folder to your document so that you don't accidentally delete the samples if you clear out your Downloads folder. On Windows, I'm going to create a new folder and name it Samples and copy the Focusrite samples into that folder. That way, if you download samples in the future, you can just add them to this samples folder. On a Mac, I'm going to create a new folder and name it samples and copy the Focusrite samples into that folder. That way, if you download samples in the future, you can just add them to this samples folder. All of the samples in this pack were kindly provided by Amplify Sounds. You can find out more about Amplify and their range of iOS applications at amplifymusic.com. There are two types of samples that you'll find in this folder, loops and one-shots. Loops are pieces of music like a drum beat or a melody, and you can use these loops as building blocks when creating your tracks. We can quickly identify loops in this sample pack because they have the tempo information in the file name. For example, 105 BPM. On a PC, double click on a loop, like this drum loop, to listen to it. On a Mac, single click on one of the loops and press spacebar to preview the loop. One-shots, on the other hand, are individual sounds, like a single drum hit or a single bass hit, which you can use to build up your own patterns. As mentioned earlier, you can identify the loops quickly because they have tempo information in the file name, for example, 174 BPM. One-shots don't have this information. You may have noticed that these packs also contain a musical key in their folder name. To make things easy in these packs, all of the samples that contain pitch information, like bass lines, vocals, and melodies, are all in the same key. For example, in the jazzy electronic pack, all of the bass lines, vocals, and melodies are in C minor. In other sample packs that you'll find online, the individual samples will contain pitch information in the file name, because they'll likely be a mixture inside the pack. Now, Open Ableton Live. Let's confirm that you have your Scarlett set as the audio device in Ableton so that you can hear what we're working on. Please open the preferences by going to Live and Preferences on a Mac or Option and Preferences on a PC. And then select the Audio tab. On a Mac, ensure that Core Audio is set as the driver type and then select your Scarlett as the audio input and output device. On a PC, set the driver type to ASIO or ASIO and select Focusrite USB ASIO as the audio device. Now we want to use the samples that you just downloaded inside Ableton Live to start creating music. 
In order to do this, please click on Add Folder on the left-hand side of Live, and this will open your file browser if you're on a PC and your finder on a Mac. Please navigate to where you saved the samples. I put mine in the samples folder in my documents. Click on that folder and press open. Now on the left-hand side of Live in the browser section, you see that folder. You can preview the loops in these packs by clicking on them and you can press spacebar to stop the preview. The view that we're working in is called the session view. And this is where you can test out different combinations of loops before building these ideas out into a full track. Click on these MIDI tracks and press backspace to delete them, as we'll be using audio loops, so we just need audio tracks. You can create new audio tracks by going to Create, Insert Audio Track. Drag a loop that you want to use onto an empty slot on these audio tracks. Then press on the play button on that clip to play the loop. Again, you can use spacebar to stop playback. It's good practice to use different tracks for different types of sound. For example, I'm using this track for the drums, this track for the bass, this track for the melodies, and so on. These loops are mixed to a loud level, so you may need to turn down the volume faders here to ensure that the master output doesn't clip. If the master output is clipping, this meter will turn red. You can turn up your headphones or speakers if you need more playback volume after turning those faders down. You can then add different drum loops onto the drum track and test out the loops to see which one you like. You can have one clip playing on each track at a time. So on the drums track, for example, if I have this drum loop playing and I click play on a different drum loop on the same track, the current drum loop will play until the end of the next bar and then the new drum loop will start. This is Ableton's way of keeping everything in time for you. You can delete loops from these slots by clicking on them and pressing backspace. You can use the send A dial here to add reverb to your sounds. And you can use the send B dial here to add delay or echo to your sounds. The rows that you see coming across here are called scenes. I like to use these scenes to store ideas for different parts of the track. You can copy clips into a new scene by right-clicking and selecting Copy, and then right-clicking on an empty slot and selecting Paste. Alternatively, right-clicking and selecting Duplicate will copy that clip down to the slot below. This set of clips could be an intro section, for example. Then you could repeat this process with a different set of clips to create a verse, a chorus, a drop, or whatever section you'd like. You can play all of the clips in a scene with one click using the scene launch buttons just here. You're also able to create drum patterns using the one shots included in the pack. Come to Instruments and double click on Drum Rack. If you're using Live Lite and you've already used eight tracks, you can delete one by clicking on it and pressing Backspace. This drum rack allows you to load individual drum hits 
and play them in any pattern you want. Come to the sample pack, go to one shot drum samples and drag in some samples from the folder onto these pads. Then on the drum rack track, double click here to create an empty one bar MIDI clip. On the left here, you're able to see all of the drum one shots that you loaded in. Ensure that the pencil tool is not selected by making sure that this box is gray and not yellow. Hit play on the clip just here. and then double click anywhere on this grid to add a note for the sounds that you want. Experiment with the patterns and get creative here. There is no right or wrong. You can delete notes by clicking on them and pressing backspace. You can change the grid resolution by right clicking on the grid and selecting a smaller resolution if you want to put notes closer together, for example. You can now progress on from this video and we'd love to know whether you're up and running with your new Scala. If you are, that's great, but if you still require some assistance, then we can direct you towards our support team.